Hey everybody, it's Hunter here, and I'm gonna explain you all about the gamepad feature within Wootility. And basically, the gamepad feature allows your Wooting keyboard to be acting like a controller. So if you need certain games to have gradual movement in driving or, you know, walking, this is basically the way to do it. So let's get started. First, open Wootility and go to the gamepad tab on the left side. Next, click the toggle button on the left to enable the gamepad function. This makes your computer recognize your keyboard as a controller. But keep in mind, your keys still work like a regular keyboard, but some games might continuously switch between keyboard and gamepad input because it still thinks it's using a controller and a keyboard with each single input. To fix this, disable the enable keyboard keys toggle. This ensures that the gamepad signal is only sent to the computer. If you only want to disable specific keys that are mapped to the gamepad functions, enable the gamepad mapping override instead. I recommend you to keep this enabled anyway because it also helps with all tabbing out of the games. If you're using a Windows PC, you can leave the controller type set to Xbox controller. Windows and most games are optimized for it. On macOS, it's just better to choose classic controller since Xbox controls aren't natively supported. Or if you run into any compatibility issues, switching to classic controller in general might help too. Now, onto the right side of the screen, you can start mapping controller buttons to your keyboard. For example, if you use the WASD keys for walking movement, then you can map the joystick's directional buttons to these keys. W for up, S for down, A for left, and D for right. Click save to keyboard and then test it out in the gamepad tester. If you press the W key slightly, you'll see that the joystick will move up gradually. Pressing the W and D key lightly will make the joystick move in a northeast direction. Now, when you start a game, you can test it out for yourself. And I'll use Cyberpunk for this demo. With the gamepad off, following characters and making gradual movements can be pretty tough. It will always feel a bit choppy and inconsistent, but with the gamepad on, I can smoothly follow a character and change direction easily. For racing games, the controls are just a tad bit different. Instead of the W key being joystick up and the S key being joystick down, you'll assign the right trigger for acceleration on the W key and the left trigger for braking or reverse on the S key. So let's see how this will work in Forza Horizon. Without the gamepad, hitting the throttle and the brakes is an all or nothing deal. It's either full on until it's gone on acceleration and brakes or nothing. But if you want to maintain a certain speed or angle, you have to tap the keys constantly. But this just doesn't feel natural. But with the gamepad on, you can actually accelerate and brake gradually based on how far you actually press down the keys. Steering can be done gradually now as well, instead of you having to tap it constantly. So when we move over to the configuration tab, you'll see the analog curve. By default, it is set to linear, but you can manually just adjust this or choose some presets. For example, let's try the steep preset. You'll notice that pressing the switch slightly changes the analog value quickly, but from 0.4mm to 3.0mm, nothing happens. After 3.0 millimeters, the value jumps up again. This curve is adjustable, so you can fine tune how gradual you want your movement to be. So let's say you want smooth acceleration for normal driving until about 2.0 millimeters, and then the full throttle afterwards. You can adjust that curve to make that happen. However, this feature has caused some controversy, especially in the Track Mania community, as this also allows you to have custom steering angles in there. The perception at the time was that I had just made a map with an author time so ridiculous that the only way to beat it was by going out and buying an analog keyboard for $150 and then setting up your own custom action keys to get enough speed out of the last two bobsleigh turns. Many were rightfully upset and argued that this should be considered cheating. Yeah. 
So it's wise if you participate in tournaments or certain games to check what is allowed and what is not. If your game character needs a specific angle to hit a proper sidewalk or a turn, you can change the angle adjustment so you can hit the maximum angle by pressing the forward and side buttons at the same time. And then we go over to the square joystick output. So this pretty much changes the shape of the joystick's input range from a circle to a square. This allows you to hit the maximum value on both the X and Y axis at the same time for diagonal inputs. This can make diagonal movements faster or more responsive in some games. Lastly, we have the snappy joystick. Snappy joystick operates in a similar way as SOCD. With this, the joystick or key you press the furthest will be prioritized, instead of the inputs counteracting each other. I'll show you in the gamepad tester. Without snappy joystick, if I press the left joystick all the way to the left, and then slowly press the right joystick all the way to the right, both inputs neutralize each other when both are fully pressed. But with snappy joystick enabled, if I press the left joystick fully to the left, and then slightly press in the right joystick, it will still prioritize the left one since it's pressed further. But let's say I press the left joystick slightly in to the left and then also do the same thing with the right joystick. But with the right joystick, I just go a little bit further. Then you will suddenly notice it will snap to the right instead of the left, since the right joystick is pressed further. And that's pretty much it for the gamepad. Of course, if you guys use the gamepad in certain ways that I would never have imagined, then let them know in the comments below. I'm curious to see what you guys actually use the gamepad for. And of course, if you have any questions or feedback, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Goodbye.